uh, basically um, what we have here is um, black cod. So black cod fillets um, that I get from Bangkok from Paleo Rabi. Um, and I'm going to do it uh, Chinese style um, with ginger and scallion steamed. Um, but there's a certain technique to it. It's, it's quite simple and it's uh, fairly easy to do. Um, but this is probably one of our favorite ways to have uh, fish. So I'm going to get started with the fish. Um, and you'll probably see over here, I don't, I don't know if Dave has showed you, but I just finished taking my bread out of the oven this morning because I had run out of bread. So I was baking some bread this morning again. I don't know what it is about Wednesdays, but Wednesdays seem to be uh, the busiest day of the week. Um, so just adding a little bit of salt. Um, later on, we will be seasoning this with some, um, some soy and some other seasonings, but for the time being, I don't want the soy to have to do all the work. So I'm gonna, uh, so I added some salt. And then right now, right here, I have ginger that I did up um, in a little food processor. So we're gonna add a lot of ginger. That's gonna steam and mellow out a bit. Um, so when we steam this, the ginger will mellow out. When I was first taught this recipe, um, I was taught to actually slice the ginger into thin slivers. But over time, I realized that I actually prefer the ginger in smaller pieces. Um, so that's what I've done. I've just adapted the recipe. Uh, probably in a Chinese restaurant or even in a Thai restaurant, you would see that the um, ginger would be in thin slices. But I just don't like to have like big ch chunks of ginger when I'm eating my fish. So what I've done here is two. I've added the, um, the more like the white parts of the scallions because that those parts will need to cook down a bit um, when we're steaming. And so those will soften, whereas I've held on to the green bits and the green bits will be for later. So I'm gonna get started. Um, what I've done here is I've set up my own sort of makeshift um, steaming apparatus, which is basically a bunch of um, chopsticks that are sitting crisscross on each other. It's not um, the prettiest thing, and someday I'm gonna have to look for some sort of kitchen gadget that probably does a better trick. But for now, and since I've been making this dish, this is the way I've done it. And then I'm gonna turn on the heat. I already have some water that's boiling. I just boiled. That will help with the steaming process. So having the chopsticks, um, having the fish sit on top of the chopsticks helps to keep them out of the water so they're not poaching but rather steaming. And that'll also help with cooking um, faster because steam has a lot of a lot more energy. Um, okay, so now that we have that started, then that's gonna go for maybe about 10 minutes. We'll check in on it um, every once in a while. But um, I wanted to do a couple other dishes. Uh, I'm gonna start with radishes. Um, I'm not sure if you're a fan of radishes. For a lot of people, raw radishes are a bit too sharp for their taste. It has a bit of a bite. Um, and so I just wanna show you a way that we have radishes at home sometimes. For Dave, actually, his preference is to have the raw with a little bit of uh, salt um, or sometimes for me I prefer um, making like a homemade blue cheese uh, dip type of thing but because this, the flavor is so strong but what you can do and this is what they do in France is if you saute your radishes in butter for eh, maybe eight to ten minutes they mellow out a bit and they get um, they keep that kind of nice texture, but you get that flavor of the butter and the radishes together. Okay, so just heating up the pan, um, and then the fish is starting to go. Um, the reason why I wanted to pick a lid where I can see everything is so I can monitor my fish as it goes along. Um, but this is going to be um, going for, for at least maybe another eight to ten minutes. So as the butter melts, you don't have to get your butter necessarily brown. Um, you just want to heat it up and get it melted and get your radishes in and then just let them cook. This is really a low maintenance dish. The thing that of course I will be adding in later because this is unsalted butter is uh, some salt. Okay. And just a squeeze of lemon later on. All right, so we've got our radishes going. And these are radishes, they're organic, that I get from a delivery in Bangkok called Org Box. 
since we've had um, our semi-lockdown, which is getting a bit looser now, um, uh, I've basically had a lot of groceries delivered and Orcbox has been one of my go-tos for produce. So I'll let the, the radishes go. I'll have to keep on monitoring them and you can see that the fish is, is bubbling away. And in the meantime, um, well, this could be a fast day. Um, then I'm going to do um, a repeat of the cucumber salad um, that I had done earlier, which we thought we were recording, but we weren't. So this is um, a traditional smashed cucumber salad um, from, that we used to eat all the time in China. Um, and the reason why you smash them, other than to get a frustration, is that it absorbs the sauce of the pizza. And part of the reason why I'm making the salad again is um, we actually haven't had it again since the last time I made it, and we happen to have cucumbers in the fridge. It also goes well with this particular dish. Yeah, if you don't have a mallet at home, it's not the worst thing in the world. You can use um, a like this, strong enough to pull, right? That should be good enough. We've got them in bits and pieces, so they're going to absorb the sauce. And the sauce is really simple. Just, um, these were two cloves, really big cloves of garlic. We love our garlic in this bowl, so um, use less if you don't like raw garlic as much. Add that in, and then um, we'll be adding in some sesame oil. I found, I got this at the Japanese grocery store the other day, and I really like it. It's like a deeper, richer sesame oil. I think it's um, roasted. So it has like a really good aroma to it. I'm loving that one. I find when the sesame oils look lighter, then they're not as um, they're not as rich. Uh, a little bit of salt, a little bit of Chinese vinegar. Again, for some people, they don't love the taste of Chinese vinegar. So if you don't, then don't add it in. I'll give my Radishes, a bit of a, and you'll see that they can get a little bit brown, which is great. That means that radishes actually have a bit of sugar in them. And so just turning down the heat a bit. And again, letting the radishes go, letting the fish go. Continuing with our salad here. I'm going to add in also a bit of chili. Is of course Thai chili that we love in our house. A bit more spicy this time. And then the final ingredient, of course, would be a bit of soy sauce and some white pepper. So adding in white pepper. Again, quintessential sort of like Chinese cooking flavor. Um, absolutely love it in um, in uh, kanji. It for me, kanji with that white pepper is weird. Um, and then adding in some soy sauce. The main thing is you want to use a light soy sauce, not the dark. Uh, the dark would just totally color your, your dish completely. And then giving it a taste. Probably use just a bit more soy. For some people also, if you're using the vinegar, um, some people prefer to add in a bit of sugar. Um, if you don't have to add sugar to dishes in this house, we don't, so I'm not. Um, but if you prefer to um, sort of balance out the, the vinegar, then by all means. All right, so we're at 10 after. The radishes are looking pretty much done. What we want to do is give them the seasoning, so some salt. All right. And then I'm going to give a squeeze of lemon. And then just a bit of black pepper. All right. And then 
I want to give my radishes a taste and also make sure that they're soft enough. You, you do want to get them, you know, you don't want them to be soggy or anything, but you do want to get them to be a bit soft. You can taste the, oh, so good. Um, you can taste the, the lemon um, that just brightens, brightens it up. And then with the butter, um, soaked into the radishes. Um, you can see why the French really like this recipe. It really, really mellows out the radishes. I'm just gonna stick it back in the bowl where the radishes were. Um, the other thing you can do if you're trying to serve this at a dinner party and you wanna make it pretty, you can add a little bit of parsley on top or maybe some chives, but I feel that they're fine the way that they are. All right, so the fish, gonna take a quick check of our fish. Let's see how it's doing. I'm pretty confident that it's probably ready, at least cooked through. Yep, so our fish is good. And actually what's also um, helping to time out like the cooking of your fish is the water evaporating. So if you have your apparatus set up properly, then you can get to the point where by the time the water um, evaporates, you're like, oh, okay, the fish is done. Well, that's a good way to sort of um, moderate how you cook your fish. So the next step is making the sauce. What I'm going to do is I'll probably do it in two bowls. And there's a reason behind this. So let me get our fish out of the steaming pan. So we've got this. And um, black cod has kind of the same sort of maybe texture and taste of snowfish, but it's very sustainable. Um, it's probably one of my favorite fish. I'm just gonna just clean this pan up very quickly. the green parts of the scallions before, right? So we add this back onto the fish. Just like that. And at this point, what I like to do is also add in just a sprinkling of um, chili. Sometimes I'll use fresh chilies, just fresh uh, chili slices just for today, just for convenience. I'm just using the chili flakes. Again, try to get the, pot, the pan really, really hot. I'll add in just a little bit of sesame oil, just a few drops. Just like that. And then allow the oil to get really, really hot. So this is going to take a while. In the meantime, um, there was one last dish that I wanted to do for you guys. Um, and what it is, is um, it's a mushroom dish. Uh, we have a gastro pub that is sort of underneath our building called No Idea. It's been, it's really for locals. Um, the owner really cares about the food. And there's one appetizer that we, is a go-to for, for us and for some of the friends that are on this, uh, this Zoom call. Um, and it's portobello truffle mushrooms. It's really simple. Um, and so I haven't been back to No Idea, the restaurant for a while, of course, because we're completely locked down um, and they haven't been open. Uh, and so I was sort of craving this and had picked up some um, really lovely portobello mushrooms from Sweet and Green, which is another organic um, produce uh, purveyor in Bangkok. So I got these portobello mushrooms and I was thinking, gosh, it's been a while since I've had um, these uh, truffle mushrooms, but how do I make them? So I did some experimentation and um, I think Davey, the owner, is going to be upset that I, I figured out how to do this, but it's actually
actually really simple, but it requires a really, really hot pan. Um, I probably will have to turn on the fan later on when I do this. So that's why I'm waiting to do this at the very end. And just really good ingredients. So beautiful portobello mushrooms and um, some white chocolate oil, as well as some truffle salt. So the truffle salt has black truffle specks in it, but the um, truffle oil is white truffle. So we're going to hit you with um, quite a bit of umami here um, when we have the mushrooms cooking with uh, a bit of truffle oil with a bit of truffle salt. Um, but these make for a beautiful appetizer and um, it really only takes a few minutes. Uh, so I'm waiting for, I'm probably going to use this same pan just because it's going to be nice and hot. So what I'll do is I'll finish off the fish first. Um, and then we'll get to the mushrooms, and then I'll probably take this to the end of the demo. Especially with the mushrooms, we're going to need the pan on. Um, having experimented with this before, um, it is, it, you just need, the technique is really to get the mushrooms um, nice and brown um, on both sides, so they remain really juicy, but then they get this beautiful flavor. Uh, and then adding on the truffle, and then adding on the truffle salt. So um, for friends joining um, that have never been to No Idea and um, don't, won't be able to try it or don't know what I'm talking about, I'll have to make it for you without a detail. All right, so we're getting into the point where the oil is really hot and it's smoking. And this is the point where just to finish off the dish, very carefully, you're going to cook those scallions. So the scallions get um, flavored with the oil. And believe it or not, it seems like a lot of oil and it seems like it's kind of similar to when I did the Sichuan dish. Um, but anyone I've ever made this for has always been surprised to say it ends up tasting like a very light dish. And the sauce is just incredible. It's amazing how once the oil is flavored with the scallions, um, it's, it's just that much more rich and deep. Okay, so last piece for this dish is soy sauce. And so you add in a bit of soy, you can use um, I prefer light for this dish just because um, if you use a dark soy sauce, it will darken your, your fish tremendously. But at the same time, dark soy sauce does have a lot of good flavor. So if you do prefer soy sauce and dark soy sauce, if you um, don't mind that uh, the aesthetic of having really, really dark, um, dark fish, then that's okay. Okay, so I'm sticking in the mushrooms right now. I will add a little bit of oil. So the pan is really, really hot. Add in a bit of the salt to try and draw out some of that moisture. Then I will probably have to turn on the pan eventually. It's really starting to smell. up. Okay, so I'm just using canola oil to start, and then I'll be adding in the truffle oil next. Okay, sorry folks, I'm gonna have to turn on the fan, otherwise the alarm's gonna go off. Just small bits to get that flavor in. 
and then allowing for again the sear on the other side. And yet the mushroom will be still quite uh, juicy. We're using the truffle oil and tossing really quickly. I'm going to get one more taste to make sure there's enough truffle goodness because otherwise I will toss a little bit more truffle oil. So good. I need a moment here. So good. So that's um, no idea is truffle portobello mushrooms. Um, we've done this all within um, half an hour, within 25 minutes, 22 minutes actually. Um, the Chinese uh, style fish uh, done with ginger and scallions, and then the uh, oil that's been flavored with scallions and soy. We've got the radishes that we sauteed with butter, and then we have um, our cucumber salad again, smash cucumber salad done um, Beijing style, I guess. I have some steamed rice on the side, and then we also have freshly baked bread, but we don't be having that yet today. Um, we can take you guys off mute if anybody, or unmute yourself if you have any questions. I, I unmuted all. Okay. Smoky in here, thanks to the fam. Any questions? We did the top case. It's the easy thing to do. I mean, I'm always uh, reluctant to steam because I need to bring the steamer from above and look for it and wash it. So now I know the neat way of this doing is just to. Yeah. Yeah, right. That's a beautiful thing. Someone cooking. Someone oh, cooking, uh, I think. Yes, I think so. Now that everyone's off mute, then so people oh, are getting hungry. Okay. <laughs> um, Ivan, what's, what's the difference between what's the difference between besides the obviously the color? What's the difference between the black cod and the white the cod we normally find in a uh, fish and chips? You know, like uh, is it what's the difference in the taste? Yeah, I would say black cod is more of it's an even more oily fish, so it has like a, in, an even richer flavor. The flakes are smaller. Um, it's I would say it's even more delicate. Um, so if you're looking for something that has more of an elegant, you know, um, texture and flavor, then black cod is good for that. But the other reason why I like it is lost you there. Yeah, can you say that last part again? The other reason you like it is? It's sustainable. Um, so you have to look at where the black cod is coming from. But in oh. many parts of Asia, if you're looking at black cod, it is sustainable. I, I, I think in uh, South America, it, it may not be the case. So always check your, um, I think it's, I can't remember the, the reference guide, blue, blue ocean, or there's, there's reference guides for sustainable fish, and especially in Asia, I mean, we're, it's it's not hard to find sustainable options. I muted everybody, so they have to unmute themselves. You'll have to, Dave's muted everyone, so if you do want to ask another question, just unmute yourself. Hey, Vaughn. Yes. Sure. You know, yeah. when um, you're boiling this fish on top of the chopstick without yeah. any plate, when the water comes to a boil, doesn't it go up into the fish? I mean, your pan is kind of shallow as well, so. It does, it does, but you know, what you're trying to do is you're cooking from the bottom as well as the top, right? Uh -huh. So you're fish, the fish is getting the water from the bottom, but what you're also trying to achieve is the steam. 
so that the steam, you know, with the, if the steam hits the fish from the top, and then that also cooks it. That's why the fish cooks so quickly, right? So it is to a certain degree poaching, but you're also, but you're also, it's the steam that you're really trying to get to cook, to cook from the top down and get the flavors of the ginger um, and the white part of the scallion into the fish. Doesn't it um, fall apart with the water boiling underneath uh, uh, the fish? Because, you know. It depends on the fish. Okay. So, yeah, so you have to be choosy about what type of fish um, you use to do this. Um, I like halibut for this too. Um, also, very decadent, I find, when you do it this way. Um, there, some other fish would fall apart, like flounder, I would not recommend, for instance. Um, so you just have to be choosy. Try and pick a fish that you know, and then also the cut of the fish makes a difference. Right. So um, if it's a big cod fillet, you know that's going to hold together. Um, in this case, because it's being cut crosswise, I knew it would hold together. So it, de it depends on the cut, it depends on the fish. Oh, thanks. So I've never seen the fish without a plate, so that's interesting. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. One more question, Yvonne. What's the difference between a white radish and your radish is red, right? So what's the difference between a white radish? It's okay. not in Indian cooking, it's slightly bitter, and the radish that you are using. I wonder so, if you can both be used the same way. So when you're talking about the white radish, are you talking about the big one? No, they, are, they look like cucumbers, you know? The, they look like cucumbers. Yeah, so they're, they're, they're bigger, right? And um, not like small little round ones like this. Oh, they are smaller. These red ones are smaller. Yes. So these ones, um, how does the original look like? Oh, but I've forgotten. Um, okay. So these, these radishes were actually a bit bigger than these ones, but generally when we get them, they look like this, right? Oh, completely so, different. Yeah, different. Yes. Just, it's a very healthy snack, but you have to like that sharpness of the radish. So for Dave, one of his favorite snacks is, um, I'll just give him a bowl of washed radishes with the you know, edges cut off, and then a, a little thing of salt, and he'll just dip the radishes in the salt. Um, it's not for everyone, because it's a, it, it is a sharp flavor, um, and that's why sauteing in butter really mellows it out, but you get the beautiful um, flavor of the butter, and you still get that radish Tinge. Adding a little bit of um, lemon makes a difference too. You just get that brightness of the lemon. So it looks, it's, it's very simple. It's not something that people always think to do when it comes to radishes, and that's why I wanted to share this. Yeah, it's really good. It looks great. Must must try it. Okay. Yeah. Now that I know how it looks like originally. I can put it in the cucumber type radish. Yeah. Any other questions? I realized the radish was, tight, was small, like little balls. Did not realize the radish was tiny, like they were like fruits, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's more common. So this type of radish is more common in, like, you see it a lot more in North America. Um, you see it in Lebanese cooking. Um, they would put something like this into a patouche salad. Um, often, if you want to kind of use it as a garnish, you can slice it very finely and add it to your salads. It makes it, that that way the the flavor isn't too overpowered. Um, but um, in this presentation, it was more to show you where you don't have to do a lot of fancy prep. It's just, you know, chopping them up and putting them in butter, basically. So, thank you. Thank you. Okay, everybody. Well, it's 1230, so we're out of time, and I think Dave's probably hungry now, so we're going to have lunch, I think. <laughs>